In 2002, Channel 4 made a feature-length documentary of Ernest Shackleton's doomed voyage to Antarctica in 1914, and he needed a ship to play the part of, of his ship, the Endurance. And, and the ship we used was um, a ship called the Cascalot, a three-masted bark that sails out of Charleston Harbour in Cornwall. Now, she had the particular advantage of the fact that she was actually built in the same Norwegian shipyard as Shackleton's Endurance, so her hull shape was almost identical to that of the Endurance, uh, very narrow, designed to pop up out of the ice if the ice trapped her. What we had to do, though, is to make her look much more like the Endurance. We had to change her rig, we had to build on an entirely new deck and fill it up with dog kennels and fill the kennels with huskies. The first thing we had to do was to get the cascalot from Charlestown Harbour near St Austell in Cornwall to Milford Haven in Wales, so up the Bristol Channel. Took her to dry dock there, where we put on some uh, sacrificial sheathing onto her hull in case we uh, smashed into any icebergs, and it would then tear off those planks rather than damage the hull itself. And we sailed from Milford Haven um, out through the Bristol Channel, and I, I vividly remember how cold it was in the Bristol Channel. It was absolutely freezing. It was colder than it was even in the Arctic up through the Irish Sea to uh, a place called Hafnarfjorda, which is a small port just uh, outside Reykjavik in Iceland. When we were in Iceland, we really made the Cascalot look as, as much as we could like the Endurance. One of the things we had to do was to change the rig from a three-masted bark to a bark and teen. We had to build on the dog deck, put on the dog kennels, fill them up with huskies, and then sail out into the Denmark Strait, that strip of water between Iceland and Greenland. Once we were there, we, we had to find the ice to start with, we eventually did, then we had to find a way into the ice to allow us to nose our way through, wait for the ice to close up, and then a helicopter could come over and film us there, give the impression of being completely surrounded by ice. And one of the uh, most interesting shots I was involved in is the, the, the very distinctive one of the photographer Frank Hurley sitting on the end of the topsail yard arm with a, with a big camera filming all around him. Now, a friend of mine was actually um, uh, dressed up as Frank, uh, and I was even higher up the mast, right at the very top, holding onto a rope which was attached to the camera. One of the problems, we, did, we didn't have any sails set at the time, so the ship was really rolling around and this camera was <laughs> flying about. So I had to uh, hold onto this rope, and I was up there for hours. We had to leave our... Um, modern clothing behind because we're obviously in, in, in costume and I just had a couple of t-shirts and a woolly jumper on and there was nothing between the North Pole and my skin apart from a couple of t-shirts. It was freezing. I actually climbed up with a, with a, a cup of soup under my arm which I spilt uh, within 10 minutes of getting up there so I spent the entire time covered in chicken and sweet corn soup. Pull! Bring it up! Come on, that's it! Keep it steady! Keep coming! All right, hold it there! One of the main difficulties we experienced when working the ship through the ice was being able to identify where the, the floating ice was actually coming from and where the, the leads through the ice were. And we ended up using a system that Shackleton himself used. Um, so you had a, a lookout standing on the bows um, with a large timber pointer who then just move it to point the direction of which where the leads were so that the helmsman could then follow the directions of the pointer and it was a system that worked really well. But our bunks were, were down below in, in, in the forecastle and every time we bashed into one of these pieces of ice the whole ship shuddered and there were these hideous splinting, splintering tearing noises when the, the sacrificial ice plant king was, was damaged and torn off and I'll, I'll never forget the noise of that. Out of port! Reverse engines! Out of port!
Full speed ahead. Easy, Skipper. <laughs> 